Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reads. Today we're going to be talking about what a motif is and answer all of your motif related questions. So a motif is a recurring narrative element with symbolic importance. It's like a pattern that recurs throughout a piece. Now not everything that recurs throughout a story is motif, but if it connects back to one of the story's central themes or ideas, then it probably is one. But this does raise a lot of questions, like what's the difference between a motif and a theme, and what's the difference between a motif and a symbol? So a theme is the core idea of a story. It's often something illuminating about human nature or society. So theme is kind of an intangible element. It's a concept or an idea. Motif helps reinforce that theme through a narrative pattern. They're not the same, but they certainly are partners in crime, and you can use motifs and themes in conjunction with each other to help support each other. So what's the difference between a motif and a symbol? These two can seem pretty similar. A symbol is just something that represents something else. It's kind of like one half of a metaphor. Usually a symbol is something concrete in the story representing something abstract. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but that's the most common setup. So let's look at an example. How about in The Great Gatsby? So in The Great Gatsby, the Valley of Ashes is a symbol that represents the wealth and moral decay of the social elite. This is part of a motif of wealth and finance that recurs throughout the story in various different ways. We see it in Gatsby's parties, the smaller details like Daisy's voice being described as full of money. And these things all work together to reinforce the central theme, which is the corruption of the American dream. All of these things, symbols, motifs, and ideas, the reason they can be so easy to conflate or get mixed up is because they often work together in a piece and they're often very interlinked. So in short, theme is something abstract that recurs throughout a piece. A motif can be abstract or concrete and it also recurs throughout a piece. A symbol is usually concrete and it's more specific. It can recur throughout a piece, but it doesn't always. Sometimes motifs are something very specific and concrete. So for example, in Hamlet, we have a motif of ears, which kind of speaks more to an unreliability of truth. There are also these broader, more abstract motifs in Hamlet, like birth and death, something that we see recurring quite a lot. Now, a book can have many motifs. You don't need to have just one. If you're trying to find the motif, just ask yourself if there's any element that you see recurring. It might not even be something intentional, but it might be something that you can build on in further drafts. Of course, you certainly can plan the motif in advance if you have an idea for a good one. Especially if you know what your theme is going in, you might want to think in advance about how you might represent that theme through motif. You might even make notes in your outline about specific places where you want specific symbols to appear or you can just let it develop naturally. It's very hard to write a story and not have a theme naturally emerge, and by extension, not have symbols and motifs naturally emerge. These things will almost always appear whether you mean for them to or not. If you notice an element seems to be recurring or gathering importance, take a step back and ask yourself what it might mean. I rarely plan these things in advance, but you can definitely spot them while you're writing. In the current project that I'm working on, I didn't plan any motifs, but I noticed within the first few chapters that there were so many windows and so many doors. I realized that this worked so well with this core idea of the story that was emerging of the character kind of moving between different versions of herself or different stages of her life. These things will in most cases just kind of happen. You often don't need to plan for them. However, if you like to have direction, sometimes a little free write or a brainstorm before you start drafting is a good way to go. Doing a little free write and just jotting down images or ideas that come to mind when you think of your book can give you ideas for possible motifs or symbols. As a final note, remember that you don't need a motif. These kind of English classy formal terms can seem intimidating. If you're writing for yourself, no one is going to grade you and make sure that you have a motif. A story isn't weaker because it doesn't have motifs or stronger because it has them. A motif is really like anything, just a narrative tool. And if you, if you want to use it to enhance the story, that's great. But if you don't see a place for one, it's certainly not necessary. Especially if incorporating these things seems kind of intimidating. Sometimes it's nice to take the organic approach and just see what naturally emerges. Sometimes that's the most fun. So that's what a motif is. Have you noticed any motifs occurring throughout your manuscript? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.